Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video, we looked at what happens when you connect resistors in parallel and we figured out how we could calculate any number of resistors of any value in parallel together. However, off the back of that video, we've had a request from a viewer. So this is one in a very occasional series of videos where we answer viewers' questions, occasional because not that many people request videos. However, we have literally been inundated with a question from Edward Price, who said on the video regarding resistors in parallel, Hi Joe, great video. It gave me a head start into understanding how to work out the resistance. Could you also do a video on mixed circuits, please, with both parallel and series resistors, please? And seeing as he's put please twice in the same sentence, we're going to answer that question now. So I've got here a circuit that combines elements of both a series and a parallel circuit, and we're going to have a look at how we can calculate the total resistance within that setup. So as you can see, I've set up a circuit here, and it looks a little bit different to the circuits that we did in previous videos, because as you can see, we have got uh, resistors here that look like they're connected in parallel with each other, and we've got a resistor here that is connected in series with these ones. Now when you first look at this circuit, you might be thinking, well, do I do the bit that's connected in series first, do I do the bit that's connected in parallel first? Well, the way I look at it is I think if you were going to try and do the bit where it was connected in series first, what would you add this value to? Well, you've got two options, so which one of those options will it be? Well, obviously, we can't just pick one and not the other. So it's obvious we can't, in this case, do the part that's connected in series first. So if we just ignore that for now, we can see that we're left with two resistors that are connected in parallel with each other. Now, because they're connected in parallel, we can do the calculation as we've seen in previous videos. Before we get to that calculation, let's just have a quick look at the values that we've got. So we've got a 27 ohm resistor here, an 18 ohm resistor here, and a 10 ohm resistor here. So what we're going to do is in order to calculate what the parallel part of the circuit is, we're just going to use our very simple product over sum method. We've got two resistors connected in parallel with different values, so we'll be able to do that very easily. And then we'll be able to figure out what the value of the circuit is once we have the additional series resistor connected to it. So let's go and have a look at what that calculation looks like. Okay, so we've got a representation on the screen now of what our three resistors look like. So we'll just make a note of which one is which. So this here is our uh, 27 ohm resistor. This is our 18 ohm resistor. And over here we've got our 10 ohm resistor. So as we said in the preamble to this, we've got to kind of ignore, first of all, this uh, resistor here, because this resistor is connected in series. And as you can see, if we try and add this to anything that we've got over here, you can see it's simply not going to work because uh, which of these values are we going to add it to? Well, we can't just pick one. We've got to figure out what the total resistance of this part of the circuit here is. So the easiest way to do that is to use the product over sum method because we've got two resistors in parallel of different values. It's also worth remembering of course that where we've got resistors connected in parallel such as you have in this little bit of the circuit we can see there that the total resistance of the parallel resistors will always be smaller than the smallest resistor. So if we do some calculations here for the parallel part of the circuit we'll call this this kind of sub calculation we'll find our P and in this case P means parallel so we're looking for the resistance of the parallel part of the circuit notice the P is in the subscript there then we can look at this and say that uh, resistor number one times by resistor number two divided by resistor number one add resistor number two so bear in mind this is the product over sum rule product meaning the multiplication of two numbers and some meaning the addition of those two numbers. So here we've I've just kind of arbitrarily called this one R1 and this one R2. So we'll put these into the mix now. So we've got R1 times R2. So that's 27 multiplied by 18 divided by 27 plus 18. So if we perform that calculation, we, we could sort of do this in two stages but obviously that's going to be a little bit of a pain. So what we'll do is we'll bring up our uh, Casio FX85 GT Plus emulator, and we can put this directly into the calculator. So we can say that 27 multiplied by 18, I just pressed the fraction button there uh, to 
put this into the fraction as it's shown written down here, just to keep things simple. So we've got 27 times 18 over 27 plus 18. So you can see there we've put it into the calculator exactly as we have uh, drawn it on the screen here. So if we find the answer to that one, we find that that part of the circuit is going to have a value of 10.8 ohms. So there we've got 10.8 ohms. So that's worked out quite nicely there. So what we're sort of thinking about here is that we can kind of replace this part of the circuit with just one resistor that has a value of 10.8 ohms. So if you imagine this being replaced with a 10.8 ohm resistor, we can see that we've now got uh, a 10.8 ohm resistor in series with a 10 ohm resistor. And to calculate the total resistance of the circuit then couldn't be simpler. We just say that the total resistance is going to be equal to, in this case, RP, plus, and I'll arbitrarily call this resistor R3, and if we do that calculation, we can see we're going to end up with 10.8 plus 10. So we've just replaced RP with the value that we calculated down here. And we replaced R3 with the value of this resistor here. And I don't think we need the calculator up to realise that that's going to come to 20.8 ohms. So if we now go back to our uh, on-screen experiment and see what the total resistance of that circuit is. So from the calculation that we just did on the screen there, we can see that we're expecting to get a resistance in this circuit of 20.8 ohms. So in other words, we can measure from here to here, and with our beautiful Mega AVO 835, we should get somewhere in the region of 20.8 ohms. So we've got our meter set up to measure resistance. So we'll plug our leads in and we'll see what value we get. So we'll put one into the common there. And we'll measure that across to this side and we'll put one in the voltage terminal that's also the resistance terminal and we'll measure from that side there so what do we come out with let the meter do its auto ranging thing and it's come out there wow it's come out at exactly 20.8 ohms it's sort of hovering between 20.8 and 20.789 so that is really quite remarkable. Normally we'd expect that to be a little bit different because of the tolerances of the resistor, uh, maybe some additional resistance in the leads and whatnot, but you can see there that is an absolutely quality result. That's one of the best results I've ever had on these videos, so I'm really, really chuffed about that. So you can see there what we've done is we've taken a circuit that has elements of parallel resistors and series resistors and we've calculated the total resistance there. What we'll do in a future video is we'll mix this up a little bit and we'll see if there's any occasion when perhaps we might do the series part of the circuit first. But until then, thank you very much for watching.